Hello again, practitioner here, bachelor of science student, chemistry major, math minor, magician, parapsych researcher, technical skeptic, and uh, sorry, technical agnostic and Fortean skeptic. Anyway, um, I'm going to do a new trick for you guys, uh, and this one's going to illustrate uh, a chemical slash physical principle known as the second law of thermodynamics. And what I have here is I have a standard half dollar, and I'd like you to observe my hands closely, okay? Um, I should explain the principle before I actually do the trick, just this way you can ex uh, understand the context. The second law of thermodynamics clearly states that any, uh, in any reaction, which is a spontaneous reaction, um, that matter will always uh, increase towards entropy, uh, as will uh, the heat from the surroundings. So basically the entropy in the surroundings and the matter in the system will always increase towards entropy. So if you will, um, imagine that we as the universe are the system, and imagine this half dollar to be the surroundings. If we put energy from, say, a reaction or something like that in uh, the particular effect, I want you to observe now my hands closely, okay? So here we, have, we ha here we have the half dollar, okay? See, it's in the hand. It's right there. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply put it in position. Now I want you to watch this. Like, okay, I'm going to close my feet, like, so in case when I drop it, it won't fall. And one, two... Three, and lo and behold, you can see here is the half dollar grown. But you see, the thing is, now you can see that the half dollar is actually considerably bigger. But here's the thing: strictly speaking, this half dollar uh, cannot be reversed now because of the fact that in the spontaneous reaction, the system of the energy always increases. A reversible reaction means that the uh, ed, there is no net change on the set on the uh, on the set, on the surroundings. There is no net entropy change on the surroundings, uh, meaning that uh, with a spontaneous reaction, you can't reverse it, or it's you know the energy uh, level is too high to be required to reverse it. Um, this would include such metal work as this would include uh, uh, such reactions as losing metal to rust, um, or other stuff like that. Uh, these are spontaneous reactions, which means that uh, the energy levels even get back that amount or higher and higher. For every amount you're trying to get back, you'll always get less and less metal back. Now, on the other hand, if it were reversible reactions, say like certain organic chemistry reactions, you could flip between one, uh, say, enol totemer and another. Uh, without um, you could flip between, um, say, one uh, stereoisomer and another without too much difficulty, or you could constantly flip between uh, conformational isomers of a hex of a cyclohexane ring. But for uh, something like with the second law of thermodynamics, uh, this ain't going to happen. Here, I'll show you another version of this trick. Um, what I'll have to do is I'll just have to uh, grab a fresh half dollar. As you can see again, the uh, same standard half dollar here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it in the right hand. And uh, I'm just going to take it in the right hand. And uh, or actually, no, I could just take it in this left hand here. And um, just extend it up and hold it right in front of the camera and there we go like I said and like I said when I brought it in front of the camera you could see that it was getting bigger but now it actually has gotten bigger and in case you're wondering as to what that uh, that weird metal sound was that was this that was the sound of the ring hitting again that was the sound of the coin hitting against my ring as it grew so again once again the concept is the second law of thermodynamics in a spontaneous reaction, the entropy, uh, the matter, um, the matter will, uh, and the the entropy in the surroundings will always increase. In a reversible reaction, there is no net change on the entropy of the surroundings, because of the fact that it may it may increase, but it may also decrease again once the reaction is reversed at equilibrium. So bear this in mind, okay? Some reactions are reversible at equilibrium. However, um, and this is what connects to cosmocracy, which I've talked about before. Um, issues like uh, metals, for example, um, certain metals when they lost to rust, um, it requires more energy to put it back in. It's a spontaneous reaction. It's non-reversible. So um, that means that basically you're fighting the second law of thermodynamics in a lot of cases. Uh, and the same goes with the bulk of um, with the bulk of applying, uh, uh, you know, building solar panels out of uh, out of uh, silicon and the like. Um, there is a limit to what can actually be recycled, and the bulk of materials for industrial society rely on spontaneous reactions and, uh, uh, you know, uh, spon spontaneous, not reversible. Which means that um, if we wanted to rely on recycling or not colonize the asteroid belt or stuff like that, we would be fighting the second law of the thermodynamics, and our technological society would eventually collapse. The question is, do we want it to collapse in a few hundred years, or do we want it to collapse in 50,000 years? I hope that this magic trick has uh, illustrated this point. Um, uh, you know, it's a magic trick to illustrate a scientific point. You can look this up in chemistry textbooks uh, at first year level or more, um, or physics textbooks as well. 
But um, the choice is yours. Toodles.